Hello? Young Dre. What it do, baby? Chilling, man. How you doing today, man? It's Curtis. I, yeah, you already know. I know it. Shit, I got you lined up. <laughs> What's going on, man? Man, I love you, man. Happy New Year, all that good stuff. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So real quick, man, I'm on the phone with, with Dre Rising. Dre, we just uh, unfortunately got the news that we, we lost the dang near the dog father, man, GP passed yesterday. And real quick, man, I was just trying to, you know, run down a couple questions on kind of get like a, what your what your relationship was w- with GP from from the time he came in to recruit you through the time you played and then throughout your professional career? Can you talk about that? Uh, George, uh, Papa George, Papa George and I, man, had a special relationship, and I'm quite sure all the Spartan dogs knew that. Um, and he he kind of recruited me up out of out of Flint Northwestern as a, a defensive back. For, coming in for Nick Saban, and, um, you know, it was just, uh, man, man, now we, the older we got, the closer we got, right. you know, of course, there was, there was some riffs um, when I was playing for him, and I came to Michigan State, because he recruited me as a defensive back, and I got moved over to wide receiver, and um, I really didn't get the ball a lot, and so I was kind of frustrated, and and whatnot, and so we didn't see eye to eye a lot of time. Um, but I guess that must have been the door in the opening for him to be uh, like a father figure to me, uh, and, and and teaching me how to deal with adversity. So when you when you came in, you came in as a DB, or as soon as you got there, they switched you. Yeah, I was one of the top DBs in the country. Really, I never played wide receiver. Really? I just used to line up out there. I used to line up wide, line up at wide receiver just uh, sometimes uh, with Mark Ingram, uh, another Michigan State great um, first round pick to the New York Giants, and uh, the father of the Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram Jr. Um, so who who had that conversation with you, Dre? Who came to you and said we're gonna switch your position? It was GP or somebody else? Uh, it was Nick Saban originally. And he was pretty upset, you know, uh, because he wanted me in the secondary. Right. Uh, but we had a great secondary. We had a great secondary. We had a couple of players back there who had made all Big Ten. Uh, uh, but, you know, I was a different type of athlete um, right. than they had back then. And um, Nick Saban was going to start me as a true freshman. And I ended up starting anyway as a true freshman, but it was at wide receiver. And so uh, I was kind of disgruntled. Uh, in the beginning, and then, uh, as everybody knows, um, with George, it was run left, run right, and so I never really got the chance to do what I needed to do. To I felt like to put myself in position to help the team win, or um, go to the Rose Bowl, or, or to put myself in position to be uh, eligible for the draft. You know, because other you know, other guys was making so many catches and scoring touchdowns, and here I was getting like one and two attempts a game. So then, so, Dre, at that age, was you? What was the conversation like? Was you acting out, or was you going to sit down and talk to him, and y'all going back and forth? Or how did that play out when you was that young? Oh, I acted out. You know, I walked off the field and practice. And you know, I'm, I'm I'm quitting. I'm transferring, or either I'm I'm going back. Then it was so hard to transfer, so I said I was going to go to the CFL. Right. And uh, that was in my sophomore, junior, sophomore year, junior year. You know, I was like, I can't take this no more. And, and uh, you know, he sat me down and had a talk with me. And um, it's just something about him when he speaks and talks. Um, it's just a whole different. It just erases everything that you animosity or indecisive uh, decision making that you thought you might put yourself in. He erases all that, and that's what made him so special as a head coach. Um, as an administrator at Michigan State University for a long time, that's what made him so great at recruiting. Uh, that's what made him so great at coaching those pros at Pittsburgh, those Hall of Famers, and winning Super Bowls. That's what made him great at, uh, you know, um, ruffling your feathers, but yet showing you, uh, you know, I still love you. And so, uh, and I think uh, our, our university has gotten away from that, our football program. And so, uh, we're not even close to uh, what Papa George had um, skis in East Lansing with back in the early 80s. And and uh, when he began to coach as a head coach, um, it, you can't put a 
a word on it. Um, what he brought to the university, the, the attitude, um, the fire response, the belief um, that you could win and that you are a winner and that you are, if you're a Spartan, um, there, there's a, a certain a certain elements that, that, that you have to have to be a Spartan um, right. football player, you know, and, and he instilled that. I don't know what was prior um, to that, you know, with the great coaches that were before him, prior to him that coached him. Right. But I just know what he brought to the table, and we hadn't been to the Rose Bowl in 23, 22 uh, years. And uh, he put a collection of kids together from Ohio, Florida, Chicago, Michigan, um, Georgia, you name it, uh, Canada. And um, next thing you know, we were Rose Bowl champs. And uh, we were a force to be reckoned with uh, for a long time. He produced many, many, many great men. So Dre, so then, so that sit on there. So would it? That's GP. That like you said, he had a collection of people. So he he was attracted or put together a certain type of people, right? I mean, it them the Spartan dogs, those type of players wouldn't even be recruited with the different coaches now, right? It was just a different type of people, or what that he was bringing around. It was definitely different people. He was accustomed to the pro game, mm-hmm. so he was used to dealing with pro players and um, you know dealing with different attitudes with guys getting checks. So now he's coming in coaching kids with those same attitudes. We just weren't getting checked. And um, he was able to go out and recruit some of the greatest players that ever played uh, during Michigan State's uh, football t- you know, year. Right. And the thing is, the thing is, it didn't matter if they were a two-star, five-star, four-star. He didn't believe in that. Right. He recruited you. Right. And I think that's the difference now, uh, whereas – um, we get coaches just try to prove that they can bring in two star or three star and coach them up to be a great great player. Um, I think that's wrong. I think you shouldn't show resentment to a four or five star player or be able to go uh, attract one. He was able to do that, you know, with a track record and a profile coming from the National Football League, Pittsburgh Steelers, being under Coach Chuck Noll. I mean, that's that man uh, working for the Rooney's. That's big in itself, um, you know. And then, you know, to take over a university when when the football program was in total total a mess and bring it to prominence. I mean, that that right there is uh, HOF work in itself too, and it shows how much he cared about the black Afro American athlete too. Because I'm gonna tell you now, we had way more Afro Americans playing at Michigan State on football team than we do now right. in the past years. Um, and, and it's a different type of kid. It's a different type of era right now, um, of course. Um, but the tenacity and um, the wit and smarts um, that George recruited, the type of kids he recruited, uh, it was unbelievable, man, because we had some tough cats. And we got tough Spartans now, current kids as plants. But um, it was a different breed. It's just uh, flat out. It was a different breed. And I think everybody knows that, that loved the Spartan nation. Right. Now, look, so, Dre, now you've been doing coaching. You went through the career. Are there any kind of GP-isms or, or things that he used to say that, that kind of pop up in your head that you apply to, you know, what you was doing or life or whatever when you was teaching or coaching that you kind of – you might used to buck up with when you was in school, but now that you got older and mature, you was like, I kind of see what he was saying now. Yeah, and it goes back to what I said earlier, you know, about – you know, when you open up your daughter's office, which is always open, you know, you go in there mad. You go in there mad, but then you leave back out, you know, like, okay, it's like this. And it's because of something he said, you know, to you. Right. Um, and there were guys, and there were guys. I mean, in college, man, there's so many kids on the roster. Um, you know, it's hard for a coach to even really know all those players right. uh, personally. But, he, could, you know, he took the time out to to know who he could know. That's what I I witnessed, and um, uh, he cared about all of us as far as everybody receiving the same type of benefits, and that's being able to have an opportunity to get an education. Right. Um, and he stressed he stressed he stressed that you know to be to be intelligent, to be articulate, to be uh, to be proud, to be a Spartan, to be proud of who you are. You know, right. and be tough, and right. and I think that's why uh, a lot of us Spartans. Uh, in our post life, in our post life, uh, our after thirty age, uh, we're resilient. You know, we find ways to take care of our families. We find ways to put food on the table. We find ways to support 
um, our situation. Yeah, because that nigga didn't take no excuses. <laughs> at all. Nah. At, at all. You know, and I'm like that now. And I've been, if anybody knows me, I've been like that. But, you know, when I compete, I'm damn sure like that. And I got it from him, uh, along with some other great coaches. But I use everything that I can uh, that I've learned from him in coaching and in life. You know, um, it's funny. He tell every he tell everybody I was his top recruit of, of all time, and um, he say, yeah, but Andre was mad at me, and he stayed away uh, from the university, he stayed away for ten years, and um, you know, because he felt like I hurt him in the draft, and uh, I did, you know, as a young, young uh, twenty twenty year old kid, twenty one year old kid coming out in the draft, feeling like I was better than anybody else in the country, uh, but I just didn't have opportunities. Of course I felt like that, but he always told me that, you know, hey, you're my little Lance Swan. Don't worry about it. You're going to get drafted. And on draft day, my name was called, you know, and um, I ended up going first round and um, having a great, great NFL career. You know, I just wish I could have made the Hall of Fame before he had passed. Right. You would have had him there? Oh, yeah, most definitely. He was at my uh, – when I got inducted to the Michigan State Hall of Fame, he was there. Um, but I just, I know one day, I know one day in my heart, uh, and I hope I'm still here. If I'm not, it'll be my daughters will be here, my sons and grandkids will be here. Uh, that um, I touched that NFL Hall of Fame. Oh, you're gonna do it. And then real quick, uh, Dre. So it's been like we got a little closed Facebook group, and people was kind of thinking of stuff that may be cool to honor GP next year, and people were saying that. Maybe we should put that block S on the side of the helmet for one game or something. What do you What do you think about something like that? You know, to pay tribute to GP, or, or do you got any ideas that'll be dope that would that you know name in the field or doing something like that? To put the walk from the Kellogg Center to the stadium, that way he's connected to every single game that's played at that stadium. That whole walkway should be paved Michigan State green with his name all the way through it. George Perlis Way. That'd be walk dope, from the Kellogg. So when they walk that walk, all the players walk from the Kellogg to the game. They walk in. Shit, you you, you brilliant, man. That's a good idea. That's George Perler's walkway. George Perler's walkway. Know. And for every brick that you can put, every piece of concrete that you can find, uh, or however they do it, they, they're so intelligent now with this technology stuff, you know. Every player that ever played for him can put their name somewhere in there. Well, goddamn, Dre, that's it right there, homie. <laughs> Shit, you you thought that off the top of your head? <laughs> hey, man, come on, this bad move, baby. 